You are now tuning in to Youth Youth Voices Voices Amplified, a podcast production from the Community Enrichment Project, a youth civic engagement nonprofit. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Youth Voices Amplified, a community enrichment project podcast powered by youth for youth. My name is Anthony Dijek, and I'm here today with Sanderia Nair. Today, we will be talking about the variety of important work that the United Nations does around the world and how each and every one of us can help our local and international communities. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Anthony Dijek, and I am a sophomore at Desert Vista High School in Phoenix, Arizona. I am the president and founder of my high school's United Nations Association chapter. I have competed in many speech and debate competitions and am the vice president of my school's Amnesty International organization. I am also a member of my school's Future Business Leaders of America Club and am on the state public affairs committee of that club. I have won various geography competitions and Olympiads, and I have a great passion for geography, politics, and history. I visited the United Nations headquarters in New York City this past October, and am an advocate for fair elections, climate legislation, women's rights, LGBTQ rights, and minority rights in my local community. Thanks, Anthony. It's nice to be here with you today. And I'll just introduce myself really quick. So hi, everyone. I'm Sandhya Nair. I'm 11th grade high school student and a girl up teen advisor and leader from India. So my passion areas include gender and climate justice. And um, within those spheres, I'm particularly passionate about advocating for menstrual hygiene, sports for a purpose, and against gender-based violence. So um, as part of my involvement with Girl Up, I've had some opportunities to do some really cool things like interviewing WNBA star Candice Parker, um, leading Inspire sessions on intersectional representation within the feminist movement, um, contributing to pilot programs on gender-based violence and sports innovation labs. I was also a younger delegate in 2022 and I've won awards at national level debates and MUNs, been part of some youth anthologies, and I was also an honoree at the Girl Hero Awards 2022. So I'm an active part of multiple missions and projects based on SRHRJ, which is Sexual Reproductive Health, Rights, and Justice, Combating Xenophobia, Financial Independence of Rural Women, etc. And when I'm not engaged in activism or volunteering, I love to read follow sports, um, procrastinate on assignments because who doesn't, <laughs> researching random historical trivia and practicing Kathak, which is an Indian classical dance, or Taekwondo, which is a martial art. That is so cool, scenario. That's so cool. To start things <laughs> off, how about we talk about the event that brought us together? We both participated in the Intergenerational Model United Nations 2022 event through UNA. It was a great experience. In fact, it was the first time I was actually introduced to Model UN. And just talking to so many people of different perspectives really helped me understand their viewpoints and was just something I really enjoyed. In fact, it motivated me to create a Model UN club at my school. What was your experience like? Wow, that is so amazing that like it motivated you to, you know, create the Model UN club and also just get involved with it in um, greater detail. So I've been involved with MUNs for like the last two years, but all the MUNs that I'd done till that point were limited to, you know, like school levels or at most to like uh, institutional levels. So this was the first MUN where um, I actually got to talk to people from different nations who were in many cases representing their actual countries, um, especially from like underrepresented countries like uh, from West Africa and South America. So that was a really cool experience for me to really see that passion for um, the issue they were advocating. And um I think my favorite highlight from the event was the presentations by the actual UN policymakers. So I feel like that gave us not just a lot of insight into the particular agenda which they were presenting on, which in my case was about immunization access. Uh, My committee was UNICEF, but also just gave us a lot of insight into how the UN works, you know, the mechanisms, the way they have to, UN leaders, the way they have to sort of walk these fine lines of diplomacy when they're communicating with national leaders where, you know, they have to respect the sovereignty, but then they also have to hold them accountable to UN policies. So I think it's very important for youth to have a presence in events like that. And also in larger events like world summits, such as COP27 or uh, UNGA 77th session. We are both very inspired by the United Nations and Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs for short. 
So, um, Anthony, what made you take the leap from knowing about the UN and the SDGs to taking action on it? That was a great question. Um, that really made me take the leap from just knowing about it to taking action on it, which is a desire to help the community. As most of us probably during the COVID lockdowns, I felt as if I wasn't helping the community as much as I should be. And so due to that, I took action and decided to research various ways to help the community. And while my school and community does have a lot of amazing clubs and organizations, I felt like they were very local, which while that is amazing, I was looking for something a little bit more international, something with a little bit more of a bigger impact. And the United Nations is perfectly that. It helps the entire world. And it's just something that I found really amazing and how it can impact billions of people. And I, because of that, I took action and made the UNA chapter at my own school. Because while a single person trying to help the world is super difficult, um, helping the UN help the world is a much easier t- task to do that. Um, I've also had the support from my family and the school community to work on the global and local issues I care about. So that was really amazing how I had lots of support to help the world and how it may seem like an impossible task, but the truth is we can all help the world in some way or another. So now I have a question for you. How has your local community and culture affected or helped your efforts? Yeah, I love that question. And I also just want to add that um, the experience you shared about just the desire to help the community, that was very relatable to me. I think honestly, you just spelled out my whole trajectory as well, um, where, you know, you just want to help the community that has shaped you and you want to do it on a larger level. And um, as for my local community and culture, I think I've had similar experiences and support. So um, I would say there's like two aspects to my really, I guess you could say, introduction to activism or advocacy. So the first would be my family, because um, so a generally Indian society, especially North Indian society where I've grown up and I'm currently residing in, it's very clearly patriarchal. Um, but I'm originally from a different community. Um, and there, I think we have a better tradition of just advocating for women's education and um, financial independence, among other aspects of social autonomy. So I think my own family has always encouraged not just me, but, you know, my sister, my mother, my grandmother. I feel like just within the family, uh, generations of women have just set examples for the future. So um, I think that uh, just seeing my family up close, the way especially not just the women, but the men, the way they've like supported and advocated for these causes, that was probably uh, my first influence. And after that, I would say, um, since I did grow up in a very, um, it's like one of the, I would say, poorest regions of India. And my mother is actually a civil servant. So whenever she would go on, uh, you know, field visits and drives. So um, since I was pretty young, she'd just take me with her. So I think when I was like very, very young, maybe like five years old or something, I sort of grew up seeing this, you know, I would go on like polio camps and I'd go to these um, sessions with like um, human trafficking survivors And I think that kind of exposure at a young age just helped me like reaffirm my commitment to contributing to these causes. As you said, you know, working with larger organizations, established organizations, and just doing my bit to um, advance and forward these causes. And I think, um, again, that sort of traces back to my family because I don't think a lot of like young people would have had that exposure until like much later on. Um, Since I feel like usually it's in the teenage and high school years that you sort of Um, open up to the world and you know you start thinking beyond your immediate community so I'd like to thank my family for that um, exposure that I got very early on even before that like teenage hit Um, and that actually brings me to my next question for you do you think um, for so for example for me as a teenager I have had different successes and also challenges with the work I do do you think teenage and high school open up a new world of social awareness and if so why another amazing question thank you but first I'd like to say that I find it so fascinating and cool how you, through your mom being a civil servant, got to experience all these new perspectives and these new ideas. So I find that really interesting. And also, it's amazing that you had support in your community to do the amazing work you do. Um, to the question, um, I do think that just becoming a teenager in high school has opened up a new world of social awareness for a variety of reasons. I feel like a primary one is simply maturity. Um, I feel like a lot of issues require some degree of maturity and as an elementary or even a middle schooler, um, most of us simply don't have a level of maturity. 
because there are a lot of issues that plague our world and they're very intricate and very deep and they require a lot of thinking and just emotional capability so i feel like just becoming a teenager and high school stu uh, student really gave me that degree of maturity i need to better understand and process um th these various social issues which in turn gave me more awareness i believe that if you are to be aware of something you should be aware of the truth of it and the entirety of it and by becoming older and more mature i got to really experience the different perspectives that allowed me to see the whole truth behind a variety of these issues and with perspectives um going to a high school and becoming a teenager you meet a lot more people and you meet a, uh, meet a lot more adults and just because of that you get to see a lot of new perspectives and viewpoints and you become a lot more closer to these adults and because of that you get to see a lot of these social issues that affect our world and like i said many of these are very big and deep so just becoming more immersed with these issues and just gaining the new viewpoints of all these new perspectives really has opened a new world of social awareness for me um yeah i think you summed it up so well i completely agree the point about like the maturity and um the diversity in perspectives just that willingness to listen to other people um yeah. i do think that it's something that develops with adolescence and yeah i think you summed it up beautifully thank you thank you but yeah exactly now I have a question for you. So what do you think can be done to bring young people from around the world closer together to support the UN's goals? For me, I personally find it's like social media. And I'm wondering, how do you address that question? Yeah, social media is a great platform for sure. So this is something that I've actually asked a couple of different people that I've met with. This exact same question about how, you know, we can um, bring the UN goals, UN goals down to the people in a way to make it a bottom up approach to make, you know, those SDGs and those um, complex issues seem more simple and comprehensible. So I think the number one solution that I've um, that I personally advocate for, and I've also like seen this happen with a lot of other leaders, is just to make those goals water it down, dilute it to something that different contexts can understand and adapt to. So I feel like um, if we used, you know, like really complicated terms or try to explain a problem in all its depth with all its nuances to every single contact or uh, every single context and culture we go to, it won't really be effective. What would be mm -hmm. better is if we take those aspects of the problem that directly affect that community, you know, um, so that they can sort of see the impact that that problem is having on them and how their contributions can improve their own lives. So I think that makes um, that helps people uh, become more sensitive and become more willing to contribute, because I think a lot of the opposition or the hesitancy to actually bring about social change is just from people's, um, I guess you could say, I wouldn't call it like laziness, but this resistance to change in general, um, because people are just so used to, you know, the context that they've been living with all their lives. They don't necessarily want that to change, even if it's for the better. So I think that's one good way to really make those UN goals approachable. Um, and I think the way the SDGs have already condensed a lot of complex world problems into simple words, that's already, I feel like that's the way to go. And um, yeah, I think just selecting the proper problems, mm -hmm. um, adapting it to a particular community. So just to give an example, I mean, if you talk about, um, for example, girls' access to education. So if you talk about it in Afghanistan versus if you talk about it in Nepal versus if you talk about it in Argentina, so the contexts are all going to be different. So, you know, we have to adapt. For example, um, for in rural India, one of the main hindrances to girls' education would be menstruation because a lot of girls drop out of school once they hit their menstrual cycle. So that is something that we can focus on in this context versus in Afghanistan. So I was talking to this um, Afghan education leader, a uh, girls' education activist, Aydin, and she actually went to Anga 77 session and um, she told me how she was like shocked and disappointed in the lack of visibility or conversation around Afghan girls in the panel about education accessibility. So until she came up, there was actually nobody who had even talked about the Afghan girls being effectively banned from pursuing secondary education. And a lot of world readers weren't even aware of the real situation under the Taliban. So I think it's so important for like youth um, who have lived through those experiences to share their stories and to share that and, you know, bring it into the priority list of world leaders. So I think that's just, just like my ideas for how we can bring young people from around the world closer together to support the UN goals. I 100% agree with you, especially on the 
adaptability adaptability of these in, intricate um, concepts, I feel like we have to definitely make it more accessible to people around the world, yeah. and we have to make it so that they can understand it. We can't just throw these various important but also complicated issues. We have to really make them accessible through making the language accessible and also adopt them to their own perspectives. I 100% agree with you on how many people are resistant to these, resistant to see change these issues. And it's not that they're against solving the issues, they're just resistant to change. So I feel like making it more adaptable to every single individual person really could have a big impact. And I'm really glad you brought up the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. I think that it really simplifies these intricate issues yeah. but in a way that it still shows the issues in a way in a way that makes it easier to understand, but also easier to work on. And I feel like just making it a lot more accessible and adaptable, it can really significantly decrease that resistance to change. So very well worded. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree with what you said. And, um, you know, one thing that's helped me in this journey, so I talked about like how I interacted with Aydin, um, I've interacted with many other leaders like her, and I feel like they constantly inspire me to do this work, you know, because there are times when you're advocating and you're being an activist in whatever capacity you can be, whether it's local or whether it's at a larger scale, there are times where you might feel negative, you know, you might feel that your work is not really having an impact because you're, after all, I mean, you're one person and the Mm -hmm. world is a big place. So there are times when you feel that your immediate impact is not really contributing much to improve the problem. So especially like I was recently going through the SDG impact reports, like what uh, the progress reports that the UN puts together. Mm -hmm. And um, it shows that, you know, we really we are really not on track to achieving the SDGs by 2030, which I feel like we all sort of knew within our hearts. But then just to hear it spelled out in facts and figures, it can be quite disheartening. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like at times like this, it's just important to sort of connect with other leaders and hear their stories, hear the impacts they've had, because we need to keep inspiring each other, all of us, especially the youth who are still, you know, finding our way about this. Um, I think it's very important for us to stay connected, to stay close, tell each other what we've been through, tell each other what we hope to do um, in order to not just inspire each other, but motivate each other to create, to continue with this path. So what advice or inspiration can you share with other youth or young adults looking to do more with SDGs and the work of international organizations like the UN? Yeah, so with that, I really do believe that um, inspiration can be a very big driver of change and positive change. And I feel like a lot of people do not have access to such inspiration. So some ways that I believe that like how inspiration can motivate people is simply through just talking about it. It may seem as if just talking about something doesn't actually get anything done. But if I talk about it and someone else gets inspired, maybe they could take on the work and help solve many of these issues. So really, what I would say is just to keep on talking about it, keep on presenting these issues. And it could even just be telling your friends about the issues that face the world and how the UN is trying to fix it through their how the SDGs show it. But also just maybe even just watching a documentary on many of these issues or seeing pictures and videos. And they really just feel that communicating the content, whether digitally or one-on-one in a conversation, can really have a bigger impact than most people realize. I what about you? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean... Um... I would have wanted to give the same answer because I think the power of storytelling cannot be underestimated. Um, mm-hmm. You know, whether it's through spoken words or, as you mentioned, documentaries, books, anything, I feel like that can really um, move something within a person, you know. So I know, of, for example, climate activists who got moved through David Attenborough's documentaries. I know of, um, you know, people who heard somebody say something, share something, talk about something, and then they just got inspired to work on that issue themselves. So I think, um, just as I said, and what you said as well, which is that echoing each other's voices, amplifying each other's voices, which is basically the title of this very podcast. Exactly, so I yeah. feel like we've come full circle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely agree. So thank you so much for sharing that, Anthony. That advice will definitely help others to take action. Yeah. And it has been a wonderful experience hosting with you today. I hope our listeners enjoy today's podcast and find their own ways to give, think globally and act locally. Remember, we can all make changes to have a big impact on the world. 
Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Youth Voices Amplified, a podcast powered by CEP for Youth by Youth.